<clears throat> well, good morning, everyone. Because right now I'm just talking to myself, which is awesome. Oh, got a viewer finally. Awesome. Good, good, good. Um, <clears throat> I'll just take a minute just to let some of you uh, jump on real quick. Now nah, we're getting some more jump on. It's always hard when you go live all of a sudden. It's like there's no one else there but you at first. But no, it's good that um, we've got more people jumping on here. So just to warn you, as we journey through Proverbs chapter 21, I'm going to bring you to a bunch of different verses. I got super excited uh, this morning as I was preparing for this. Good morning, Deb and John. Uh, good morning, Deb. Oh, yes. I have this notification pop up. I don't know what to do. I'm not a big Facebook guy, so I don't know. All right. Here I am standing, sitting, standing and sitting and leaning in our, as you can see, our Compassion Cafe. And just to let you guys know, good morning, Bev. Good morning, Erica. Uh, soon, and as we get trained on some of the equipment, we'll be uh, opening the cafe up to more goodies. And so I'm just going to take a minute while some of you are getting on. Some of you have already seen some of our, I don't know if you can see all that, some of our menu, but check this out. When you got flavors of things up there, obviously you guys have been seeing our coffee, uh, but here you go. This is the machine, the espresso machine. Yes, the espresso machine. That's what I'm excited about right there. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Terry. Hey, let's jump into, man, I'm getting notifications all over the place on my phone. All right, hey, let's jump into uh, Proverbs chapter 21. Since today is October 21, Proverbs chapter 21. I hope you guys are enjoying our journey through Proverbs together. I have, it's been fun. It's a great book, full of wisdom, full of little nuggets everywhere, right? Um, so Proverbs chapter 21, again, if you hadn't done it yet, uh, you can do it for the rest of it, it, the rest of the day. Just read chapter 21. Uh, how many verses are there in 21? There's only 31 verses, so uh, you can knock it out in no time, hopefully. But Proverbs chapter 21, I'm going to land on verse 3. All right, this is what, Chris, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Uh, this is what really was wrecking me this morning and really want to encourage you. Uh, I'm going to read from the CSB version, the Christian Standard Bible version, just so you know. Good morning, Emily. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 3, it says this. Doing what is righteous and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. All right, you sit there and go, what does that all mean? What is happening here? Well, let's look at two words that I want to focus on in that verse, and then we're gonna, I'm going to give you three other verses, and you're going to see how this is played out. It's pretty cool. I'm going to make some connections, and your brain's going to be like, that's awesome. So you have two main words here, right? Look again, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 3. You have righteous and just. Here's what this means. The word righteous is the Hebrew word, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this word, uh, but it's tzedakah, all right? T-S-E-D-A-Q-A-H. Righteousness here means social justice. It means that everyone should have their basic needs met. Now, please don't think of socialism. That's not what's talking here. But the word used here in the Hebrew is this idea in righteousness is the idea of social justice, that every human being should be allowed to have their basic needs met. Now, let's look at the second important word, just. That's the Hebrew word mispot, M-I-S-P-H-A-T, mispot. Here's what that means. That is Legal justice, where that's the legal side of things that, you know, I, I guess in our modern day, we can say that's the, um, that's the court system. We have legal justice right now. So those two words are very key. Doing what is righteous, social justice, 
basic human needs are being met and just. We have a legal system, a legal justice system is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. So let's tie some pieces together now. Okay. The very first time you see the word just and right or justice and righteousness is in, I'm going to give it to you. Ready? Genesis 18, 19. Okay. Genesis 18, 19. I'm going to read it to you real quick. Um, bear with me as I go to pages. Genesis 18 and 19, and I'm going to make this all make sense. It's going to make sense. I promise. Just hang in there. Genesis 18, 19, the very first time we see these two words, and again, your translation may say right and just or just and right, or it may say justice and righteous and righteousness. But Genesis chapter 18, uh, what did I say? Verse 19? Yes, verse 19. Um, this, is, this is what God says to Abram. For I have chosen him. He's talking about Abram, Abraham. For I have chosen him, Abraham, so that he will command his children and his house after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. This is how the Lord will fulfill what Abraham was promised to him. What was Abraham promised? Remember, I'm going to bless you. You're going to, your, your descendants are going to be as many as the stars. You're going to be a blessing to the nations. Right? I'm going to use you, Abraham, and your family to do what I'm supposed to do here on earth. And so how is it going to be done? What did God just say? It will be done by his family doing what is right and just. All right, it's not done there. That's the first time we hear right and just. So we're talking, what it was, again, what are we talking about? Social justice, that every basic human need um, is met. And what else? Legal justice, right? All right, hang in there. Next time it's used, 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 9. Let's turn there, 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 9. Remember real quick what was broken in the Garden of Eden. Shalom, perfect peace. And there were four relationships that were broken in the Garden. The re our relationship with God was broken when sin entered the world. Not only that, our relationship with one another was broken. Our relationship with ourself, all of a sudden now Adam and Eve are carrying shame and guilt. And our relationship with creation was broken. And so how is Jesus, how is God restoring all of that? Remember, Abraham, I'm going to make you into a great nation. You're going to be a blessing. And by the way, you're going to do it through what is right and just. Right and just. Now, 1 Kings chapter 9 or, I'm sorry, chapter 10, verse 9, the Queen of Sheba is meeting King Solomon, and this is what she says to King Solomon. He has made you king, referring to God, God has made you king to carry out justice and righteousness. So you still see the theme, even, hey, Abram, how am I going to restore everything that was broken in the garden? How am I going to restore the shalom that was shattered in the garden through justice and righteousness? It's through Abram. Now it's through King Solomon. Now, third one, Isaiah chapter nine, verse seven. This is a prophecy of who Jesus was going to be. Now check this out. Isaiah chapter nine, verse seven. Let me get there. And maybe if you, many of you may know uh, the verse above it in chapter 9, verse 6. For a child will be born to us. You read this maybe during Christmas time. For a son will be given to us, all referring to Jesus. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And then watch this. This is so cool. Isaiah is prophesying. Remember, he's, he's telling everyone about the coming Messiah, Jesus. And he says this. The dominion will be vast and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness. It is all over scripture. So here we go. Something was broken in the garden. Shalom, what God intended. Sin came in. And how is God going to restore it? Abraham, it's going to start with you and your family is going to do it. Doing what is right and just. Hey, King Solomon, you're on David's throne. I Queen Sheba says, God put you here for a reason, for justice and righteousness. And then the prophet Isaiah says, hey, this isn't done. God hasn't completely restored everything. There's going to be a Messiah, a Savior that's going to come, and he's going to establish God's kingdom 
by doing what is right and just with justice and righteousness. Come on, how awesome is that? And then now we look, and this makes sense. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 3. Doing what is righteous and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Why? Because that's the way God was going to restore everything that was broken in the garden was through this justice and righteousness. It's through the legal justice that we have because legal justice brings order, but it's also through meeting the basic needs of human beings. It's the social justice, not socialism, social justice that we ought to take care of one another. That is how God's kingdom was going to come on earth. There is, here's my core idea, there is no shalom, there is no peace here on earth without justice, which brings order, and righteousness, which meets basic human needs. Come on, that is awesome. That got me fired up this morning. Hey, I want to remind you, maybe uh, two years ago, maybe a little more, uh, I did a teaching on this, and uh, I did, I think we called it Restored or Making All Things New, something, no, I may be puzzled by the Bible, I don't remember what it was called, um, and I may bring this back, but I created this so I can get it on my whole screen, I created this for the whole church, it's called Making All Things New, and it's the entire biblical story, I don't know if many of you remember, but uh, there we go, uh, here we go, see, I brought in, look, Justice and righteousness. Look, Genesis 18, we saw it promised to Abraham. And then look, it was brought up in 1 Kings for King Solomon. Remember, he's going to do it with justice and righteousness. And oh, look, there's a prophecy right here in Isaiah chapter 9. I know it's backwards, sorry. That, hey, there's a prince of shalom. Remember, the prince of peace is coming. How will he establish the kingdom? <gasps> Through justice and righteousness. And then eventually Jesus does come. Remember, and he, then the spirit of God is with us. Holy Spirit, we're here. And eventually the world will eventually fit. But hey, I have more copies of this if you want it. And maybe I'll do another teaching series. Maybe you'll sit here and say, hey, Ryan, do another teaching series on this because I, I need this big overview again. And it's beautiful and this, come on, now, this gets me excited. When we understand the biblical text and how everything's related, it's awesome. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 3. One more time, let me read it for us. Doing what is righteous and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. I love that. Because sacrifice is what we give it, and we understand it. But the Lord's saying, hey, if you're going to usher in my kingdom and my shalom, because it was shattered in the Garden of Eden, you're going to do it through justice and righteousness. So my challenge to all of you, how do we live that out? How well do you live out justice and righteousness? Come on, man, I'm getting fired up. I'm ready to preach this morning. My, my jean jacket is about ready to come off right here in Compassion Cafe. I love it. God's word's amazing. But hey, as followers of Jesus, you and I have a responsibility. Let's help usher in the kingdom of God through justice and righteousness. Let me pray. Father God, we thank you so much. How awesome is your word, the way it comes alive, the way it speaks to us, God. We praise you. We thank you for it. God, I just pray you help us usher in your kingdom. Uh, this broken world needs you. And so God, I pray that you would help us usher in your kingdom. Restore everything that was broken in the garden. And we're gonna do it as we see all throughout your scripture with justice and righteousness. May we just be open vessels to be used by you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, real quick, I want to close actually with Proverbs chapter 21. Now look at verse 15. I forgot. I had a, I had a note here for, uh, for that. But uh, real quick, verse 15, justice executed is a joy to the righteous, but a terror to those who practice iniquity. Sit on that. Hey, Blessings to you guys. Have an awesome day. Don't forget, anytime you can stop by. I still got more copies. You can hit a comment if you would love this to be a series again, and I'll bring it back and just so we can grab a big overview of, of Scripture and what, what is God after and how, how can we partner in that. Hey, blessings to you guys. Thanks for jumping in. And tomorrow, Proverbs chapter 22. Love you guys. Go and be radiant.